Okay, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Today we're going to talk about tax, talking tax with Tom. That's Tom Yamachika. He's the president of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. And let me say this before I actually introduce him, Tom. <clears throat> tax is really important. Tax is going to affect your life one way or the other. Tax represents the biggest part of your relationship with government. But tax is also an indicator on how government is doing. Tom Yamachika, welcome to the show. Great, great to be here, Jay. You got to remember, uh, the power to tax is the power to destroy. You bet. So it was true, is true, and will be true. And it's part of a democracy, but we have to be attentive to it. So the legislature is in full tilt boogie right now. And there are all kinds of bills, probably thousands of bills, and some of them have to do with changing our tax. Can we talk about some of them? Sure. Uh, as with a number of other years, there are bills to increase the income tax yet again. Uh, this one's House Bill 2385. Uh, it, would it would make the top tax rates 12% and 13%, uh, which would let us beat California for the highest tax rate in the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, so wouldn't that be fun? Well, why? why? Why is this coming up at all? Why can't, why can't they just leave it alone? Because they need more money to do what they want to do. So this is this a matter of what? Inflation? Is it a matter of new projects that somebody, some, some smart guy thought up and it costs more money than we have? Is it a matter of the Council on Revenues, um, you know, trying to figure out how much we got coming in so we can determine how much more we need to do our thing? No. Well, if you want to, you know, figure <laughs> out what our thing is, uh, we, we have lots and lots of programs going on in the state government. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, some of them are less justified, some of them are less justifiable. Uh, in some we have uh, waste and overuse, uh, in some less so. Tom, I know that if they let you and me loose in the legislature, we could cut those programs out in about 20 minutes. <clears throat> and you know what? <clears throat> then we wouldn't have to raise taxes, would we? Yeah, well, those, those, t those programs are buried real good. <laughs> I don't know if you, you and I'd be able to find them in 20 minutes. <laughs> right, hidden, right. Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the problems is that a lot of the money that state government has is squirreled away in these things called special funds. Uh, and nobody knows where they are. Uh, nobody knows how much is in them. Uh, and uh, if you ask people, uh, not, not one person can tell you how much money there is in the entire state because the, these, these funds are everywhere. And uh, you know, some people know about some of them, some people know about others, but I don't think there's anybody who knows about the whole thing. Now, the individual departments who have special funds are supposed to report that to the legislature. They don't always. Huh. We, we've seen you know, reports come out from the state auditor time and again that say, hey, you guys uh, didn't, you have, the, you have these special funds, you didn't report them. And uh, then the department goes, oh, we'll take corrective action. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whether they actually do or not is, un, you know, under question, but. You'd think somebody would be watching him on that. You know, I remember years ago, not that many years ago, there was this big issue about how many employees the state government have. And round and round for months, and it came out that we don't know. <laughs> we don't know how many employees the state has. And therefore, and therefore, we don't know what we're spending on them either. Yeah, that, that's that's a part of the problem because employees are coded general fund, special fund, uh, federal funded, uh, with you know different kinds of what they call means of financing. Uh, so if you don't know how much money you're spending on them, you don't know how much you, you don't know what you're paying your employees with either. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's it's a bit difficult. Okay, so when you say eleven and uh, thirteen, you're saying. Uh, is that a difference between corporate and individual rate? Why, why do you give two no, numbers? That, no, that's the that's the top individual rates. Right now, uh, we have it going up to eleven. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. So it changes to thirteen. Yeah. So so the two two new brackets would be created: twelve percent and thirteen percent. Yeah. And these are for you know uh, people with you know six digit incomes or, or higher. Yeah, but you know what it says. It seems like a small amount when you're just going from hmm, 11 to 13, but in fact, that's an amount that's 20% more in terms of the increase, right? Yeah. 
So oh, that's yeah. gonna that's gonna that's gonna have an effect on everybody because we're one of the highest, right? You mentioned one of the highest uh, rates in the country right here in Hawaii. Now. Yeah, but but that's that's not the real problem. Uh, the real problem isn't the income tax. I mean, it produces some of our uh, state government revenue, but the big problem uh, is the GET. And, and the GET is you know, very insidious because uh, it applies to everybody. Mm -hmm. Because everybody who uh, goes and buys something is going to be is going to be indirectly or directly paying the GET. Now I heard that this year, I, I mean, maybe this didn't go anywhere. I heard that this year at least some people were considering making exemptions for what medicines or medical services. Uh, is that in play? That is still in play. Yeah, um, there are various forms of it uh, still floating around the legislature. Uh, medical devices, medical services, um, feminine hygiene products, you know, there, there are bills to exempt uh, some or all of those. And, and uh, states on the mainland that uh, don't call it a GET, they rather call it a sales tax, uh, you, you know, most of them do exempt those kinds of things from the sales tax, don't they? Yeah, there are a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of states that have exemptions of that kind. I mean, uh, number one, uh, sales tax usually doesn't reach services at all, uh, or just a, a very few selected services. Um, so medical medical services wouldn't be picked up, and then they do would have uh, some exemptions for like drugs or medical supplies. And, well, and, and ours, do, ours has some exemptions too. But, you know, I mean, I would support a reduction. I would support appropriate exemptions here because I think the sales tax is too it's too over overarching it's too plenary it covers too many things i mean um, rest is so well, that's what we has argued for this for its whole life let's make the sales tax you know complete um every little thing but you know what May maybe it's not a good idea especially when you have a regressive effect i mean it's a double whammy regressive effect when you do it on medicines because these people can't afford medicines it's the little guy that gets killed on medicines and and the medical services. Yeah, so and everything else because exemption. they... Right, right. Well, everything else is true. Yeah, yeah so so one thing you got to watch for is uh, this bill called the State Improvement Surcharge, which is going to be uh, lifting our GET by another half percent. You know, this is on top of what the counties have put on it already uh, for five years. It's supposed to be temporary. You know, that's, that's in the theory. Whether it comes to pass, we don't know. Uh, because you know stuff has been temporary before and has changed to permanent status, like uh, you know the nine, ten, eleven percent income tax rates that were uh, brought into into effect, I think, in two thousand and uh, two thousand and nine. So we had a, a temporary nine, ten, and eleven percent top tier brackets uh, for two thousand ten to two thousand fifteen. We lost them in two thousand sixteen, and we thought, oh, we're rid of we're rid of them. But uh, in two thousand seventeen. Uh, they came back with the bill that says, hey, let's reinstate these and, and we'll, we'll pay for the earned income tax credit that way. You know, oh, and, that's um, what, and that's what passed. You go to New York State, I don't know exact rate, but New York State has a sales tax, call it a sales tax, of like 8%. So people think, oh, wow, that's more than Hawaii, but not really. No, no, not at all. it only applies to some things, not other things. It's not plenary over everything. And so I think there's, you know, people, there's a confusion in that. So when, when they say, oh, we're going we're gonna to raise you by half a percent, um, that is a huge raise because it covers everything. And I think we'd be very careful about treating the, the GET lightly. It's a very, as you said, a very powerful tax. It's, it's the one that has more effect than anything else, any other tax. In yeah, day. no, a, a half percent uh, tax rate, uh, rate hike can be expected to generate between quarter of a million and $300 million annually. That's a lot of money. So, uh, you know, uh, so when they think up these new projects, with, uh, some of which are cockamamie to start with, uh, they really ought to think about the effect on the small guy uh, with a, a regressive tax like this. I hope somebody's thinking those thoughts. And speaking of regressive taxes, we can also go on to carbon taxes. You've heard of carbon taxes, right? I've heard of them, but I haven't, I haven't seen much of them. In fact, I don't think the country has seen much of them. Yeah, I think there's like maybe one or two states or one or two cities that have them. I don't think a state does yet. Um, but the idea is uh, for a tax to be imposed on any kind of fuel uh, that basically, th uh, when you burn it, it throws carbon into the atmosphere. And the, uh, and the tax 
you know, what, the, the tax amount is based on the amount of metric tons of carbon dioxide released by the burning of this gas. So um, what uh, this bill, uh, Senate Bill 3150 does, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, when we talk about gasoline, for example, we, have, we already have taxes on gasoline. We have a state fuel tax of 16 cents a gallon. We have a county fuel tax that's between 16 and a half and 23 cents a gallon, depending which county it is. And then this will be on top of that, okay? Uh, and the the amount of carbon tax they're talking about is, you know, between 40 and 80 dollars per metric ton, uh, which would be when you work out to you know per gallon, it's 17 cents per gallon when it starts. 53 cents a gallon when it's fully phased in. And that's at $80 per metric ton. Sounds, you know, it sounds regressive to me. Yeah, a anybody who wants to drive a car, around, yeah. Yeah. anybody who wants to drive to work uh, is going to be hit with this. You and know, most of us do drive to work. I, I can We're understand not the, the motivation behind it. I mean, of course, you know, you want to reduce the amount of carbon in the air. You want to reduce the amount of carbon in the world. Uh, you want to do your part uh, to ameliorate climate change and all that. Um, but, you know, we have not been successful in taking cars off the road. And I, I would doubt, actually, that there is a, um, a significant effort in the legislature now to do that. Over the years, you and I have both seen all these uh, efforts that failed about, you know, trying to, you know, uh, avoid cars coming on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or shorter hours for state employees or you know, the traffic jams. The traffic jams are so unproductive, they're damaging and detrimental the state economy to the quality of life, to the highways. <clears throat> this is not gonna actually do that. This is not gonna help where it needs to help. Uh, that, that's my reaction to it. What is your reaction? Uh, well, there's all kinds of ways to raise revenue, and this is being talked about by the environmentalists all the time. Um, it's got the State Climate Change Commission behind it, so uh, there is there is some considerable weight behind it. Um, but but really, I, I don't think it adequately considers the plight of the, you know, the ordinary person. Um, you know, people have, you know, I've, I've written about that tax before, and people have, have said, you know, don't you have a shred of morality in you? Don't you know what's gonna happen to the planet? <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and I said, look, it's fine to worry uh, about the end of the world, but a lot of your constituents worry about the end of next week. Right, can't eat, wind up homeless, and I'm sure that's increasing. But the the other uh, aspect of this, um, which you know, which I I find interesting, is that um, remember the barrel tax? It still exists. Right. And every year is a scramble on who gets it. And it, it, you know, the original concept was you you collect it off a you know a barrel of oil. Then you put it into you know renewable efforts and climate change efforts and all the environmental efforts, and and over time you know it's it's eroded like there's a hole in the barrel, and all the money that's collected doesn't go to those noble purposes. It goes hither and yon, hither and yon. Not a whole lot of control about where it goes, and so you know I would ask you: Is there anything in this bill, Tom, uh, that would control the carbon tax to go to the right place, to go to the environment, to go to climate change? Or is it just going to go into the general fund uh, and pay other bills? Well, I, I, uh, the the carbon tax, as proposed by this bill, would would replace the barrel tax, and and I, uh, you know, I, I kind of beg to differ in in a way that I support all of it going to the general fund because there, uh, you, you know, uh, where the money is, uh, you have legislative legislative oversight over it. And you have you can actually have people watching it, whereas in special funds, uh, I mean, it, they they say that the that the money is, you know, so-called earmarked for you know, certain noble purposes, but whether it actually goes there, you don't know. No. And uh, the amount of oversight that's applied in practice, um, I, I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, touche on that one. I, I, I can't say I disagree with you, but um, uh, let me let me ask you: I mean, Has this got a chance of passing? Because it's been raised before. Well, it's uh, it's passed crossover, so it's still alive. 
who knows what's going to you know, ultimately make it to the end. Um, uh, I, I think uh, you know, if people kind of wake up and, and, and see the prospect of this kind of major, you know, major uh, hurt happening to their pocketbook, they may kind of jump up and say, hey, you know, we've got to do something about this. Yeah. But they haven't yet. Yeah, it's the old notion that taxes don't go down. They never go down. So you have the barrel tax, whatever that is, however that you know takes, takes money out of your pocketbook, and you have this replacement carbon tax, but it's not cheaper. It's more. And oh, it's much more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the barrel tax currently is uh, what a do dollar five per uh, per barrel, which works out to maybe two and a half cents a gallon. Well, see what happens. I mean, you know, if the environmentalists say they want to have this, uh, even though they're not getting a direct benefit, um, they're getting an indirect benefit, but not a direct benefit. And I guess the, the state, the state wants to have it, to, so they have more money to spend on these projects. Well, I mean, again, again, it's a, a a question of what's your, what's the moral imperative. If the moral imperative is we need to protect the environment at all costs, uh, then you know that's what you do. Um, you you uh, basically start treating. Uh, hydrocarbon fuel is a sin, uh, like you treat uh, liquor and uh, tobacco as sins, and you tax them, tax them higher, or you ban them outright. Well, I, you know, I, I know one uh, journalism professor at uh, the uh, UH School of Communications who says the most important story of our time, and you probably say that today, even today, um, with the coronavirus and all, um, is, is climate change, because it's wrecking the planet. And so if, uh, if you were king or if I were king, or if we, make the two of us were co-kings, okay, let's make ourselves co-kings. <laughs> and, and, and we were determined okay, yeah. to, to deal with climate change as an existential threat to the survival of the species, we would take much more dramatic steps. We would make sure that there was a way to stop these, you know, fossil fuels in their tracks. We would say, from now on, it's all electric cars, and electricity has to be generated by renewable sources. That's what we would say. Yeah. And we would get there, not by 2040 or 2045, we get there right away. Um, but government, you know, in a democracy, it doesn't work quite that way. Even if climate change is inexorable, um, government may not be able to get there fast enough. So let's, let's talk about, so then, since you're on the green topic there, let's talk about green fees. All right. Now, um, by green fees, I don't mean what you pay to get on the golf course, uh, but uh, there are um, what they call green fees in you know, other places like the Maldives, uh, Galapagos Islands, uh, and so forth. Basically, it's either an entry tax or a departure tax. So, you, so you 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 want to go there? You know, you pay this fee, you, or, or you you pay this fee once you leave. Um, and it's an airport fee. It's a transportation. It's a fee on people coming and going. It's a fee on people coming and going. Does that include local residents as well as tourists? Uh, I, I think it depends on the on the locality, but uh, the ones I've seen do have exemptions for local residents. Hmm. So why 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 has the commerce clause come to mind? Uh, can you impede commerce that way? Is that constitutional? Uh, you can impede commerce, but but there's but there's something more fundamental afoot. It's called the constitutional right to travel, because you know we are citizens of the United States. Uh, we have the constitutional right, and and the uh, Supreme Court decided a case in uh, in the 1800s uh, that say we do have the right to go as we please between states. Uh, unimpeded by such such things as a as a departure tax, be because uh, uh, Nevada uh, tried to put one in uh, in the 1850s. It was one dollar per person leaving the, co the 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 state by you know train or stagecoach. They didn't have buses yet, um, and the Supreme Court said, "Well, uh, that's unconstitutional. You can't do this." Because that impedes the constitutional right to travel. So what's the difference? Uh, we don't have state coaches anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here on Think Tech. <laughs> but, that's, but that's what I told the legislature. You know, we still have this case called Crandall versus Nevada. It's still good law. Uh, it established the constitutional right to travel. And uh, if, you, if you do this, 
uh, you'll find yourself in federal court and you'll be shot down. That's embarrassing. It means we don't fully understand the right to travel. <laughs> And then, if, and then if you just start trying to uh, discriminate against foreign people, uh, you know, that are not protected by the Constitution of Trial, then you have the problem that you're discriminating against foreign commerce. Well, and you also have the, the notion that uh, Hawaii is uh, killing the goose. I mean, tourism is our middle name. We can't afford to uh, start squeezing the goose on that. We need to protect it, especially in view of the difficulties uh, of coronavirus. We're, we're already squeezing the goose. You know how much our transient accommodations tax is? Okay, it's, okay. It's, it's, it's twice <laughs> as much as it was when the when the uh, when the law started off. That okay, was in nineteen eighty six. So you have the transient accommodations tax plus you have the green tax. What do we think of next? You know, point is rental vehicle we, tax. <laughs> okay, so forth. Well, tell me more good news. <laughs> that's not that's not going to pass, is it? Uh. I sure hope not. Uh, right, right now it's a uh, it's a, a bill to convene a study group and and do a study, and the office of planning says it's going to be, you know, like four hundred fifty thousand dollars to do. Uh, and 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 I, I I'm saying you know like in my testimony, save your money. This is unconstitutional. You know, go do something else. You know, we, we could we could use that money elsewhere. You know, the four hundred you know, fifty thousand. Yeah, yeah. Go go save some homeless people or See, something. Yeah, I tell you, Tom, you and me, we could be the study group. We could do it for much cheaper than that, and we could give them an answer in about twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, and and um, uh, what about empty homes? You, you want to you talk about the empty homes oh, tax? Please, that, totally. Yes. Okay. There is a uh, a proposal. Senate Bill 2216, oh, and by the way, the green fees bill was Senate Bill 2696. But the empty homes tax uh, is uh, basically how it works is you'd get sent a monthly return every month um, that you have no property that is that you don't qualify for a homeowner's exemption for. Okay, so you could be renting it out. Uh, you could you'd be using it as a vacation home, whatever it is, but as long as you don't uh, qualify for a homeowner's exemption, you'd be paying this tax every month. And what would the tax be? Uh, it, it would work out to annually 5% of the value of the property. 5%. Now, just, just to give you a comparison, in, in Honolulu here, our residential rate for, for property, our, our, the property tax we pay now, is $3.50 per thousand. That's a lot less than five percent. Yeah, five percent is fifty dollars per thousand. Yeah. Just, just, just so you can compare, you know, apples and apples. Well, this sounds punitive to me. It is punitive, and that's. But there is a more fundamental problem with it, and the fundamental problem is, it's property tax. Because it's imposed on the owner of property, and it's imposed because the the owner uses it or doesn't use it, uh, in 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 a certain way. And the only people in this state who can impose property taxes are the counties. You know, we the people wrote that into the Constitution in 1978. So, don't we have, doesn't the state have power over the counties? Doesn't it preempt on things? Well, no, the, the, the state constitution preempts the state. Okay. And it gives the counties the power. So this is unconstitutional under the state constitution. Right. So something that, you know, something is there to control our state government, and that's our state constitution. And, and then, then, then there's the federal government and the federal constitution that we have to uh, abide by. Have you mentioned this to them? It's in my testimony. All right. Well, see what happens. Maybe they should have another study, and, and you and I can be the, you know, we can do the study cheap. Yeah. I hope they don't have to spend $450,000 finding out what's in the state constitution. Really? Yeah. yeah. Definitely true. We only have three minutes left, Tom, and I want to get to, I know you have more on your list, but I just want to get to one big question. Um, you know, we have, right now, coronavirus has not made a substantial impact on air travel and tourism into, into our tourist industry here. Um, but it may. In fact, I would, I would venture to say it will. Uh, you know, if, if just hypothetically we had a, a big scare, a lot of cases come down, you know, when the testing starts to really going along um, and people far and wide say gee that you know that's a dangerous place I'm not going to go there uh, and so tourism drops off like, like it did in SARS like it did in 9-11 and the beaches are empty and so forth 
and that's a big source of revenue for the state. I mean, the, the Council on Revenues would certainly, you know, include that in its uh, expectations for the amount of revenue the state would receive in a given fiscal period. So if that happens, we're not going to get so much revenue. And I just want to know what happens if that happens. But, and it's fairly likely something like that will happen. What yeah, happens but we to have, our state? <laughs> yeah, uh, we have uh, a rainy day fund. That, that we've established to deal with emergencies like this. Um, it's been fed over the years by the legislature. Uh, we actually put some money in it last year, I think it was five million more. Uh, so we have some money in there to help help cope with the, uh, the situation. Uh, it won't last forever, but it's at least it's something. That's what we have. That's it? That's your answer? <laughs> What, what, you know, this could be a major economic crisis for the state. Let's mm. assume, let's assume, I'll take it a step further. Let's assume you that know there's not enough money in there to do much at all. What happens? Uh, then we, I think we, we come back to furlough Fridays and, uh, you know, government issuing IOUs instead of, instead of cash for things it buys. Uh, up, to, up to the merchants whether they want to take them or not. Um, People people uh, get paid less, uh, and then you know we've had experiences with that before. Yeah, well, it'd be hard to collect taxes, especially increased taxes, wouldn't it? Because nobody would have a lot of well, nobody have money. Period. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, remains to be seen what happens, but I think you and I have to keep on talking um, because I think this will emerge not as necessarily as a fact but as an increased threat uh, over the next couple of months during, during the legislative session. Uh, and they really need to think about it. Yeah, those, uh, those people in that square building behind you uh, are going to have very important roles to play. Yeah. And so is the press. And so are you. Thank you so much for doing what you do, for checking up on us. You know, it's not like the average citizen uh, goes to these hearings, but you go. It's not like the average citizen follows all these increases in tax, or all these increases in tax. Uh, but you do, and, and we should appreciate that. And we should appreciate other members of the press and, you know, the professional groups that do follow these things so it doesn't happen in a vacuum. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you, Jane. Aloha.